Partnerships are vital to our global outreach, enabling us to take the love and hope of Jesus Christ to those who need it most. Our Boots on the Ground Partnership Program physically ministers to those in desperate situations all over the world. The Israel Partnership furthers Kim's legacy of outreach to Israel and Jewish people worldwide. We invite you to become a partner today. Join us today and be part of a community that inspires hope, brings restoration to life and often healing from the past. Together we can make a difference and we thank you for your ongoing support. Welcome to Real Life, Real Faith. We have another brand new episode for you. And today, Pastor Fabri and myself are going to be talking about life after a mountaintop experience. So all of us have these in life, these moments where things feel amazing and like they couldn't get any better. But then after that, what happens? There's so many examples of this in scripture, but as usual, I'm going with three points and three scriptures because that's how I was taught to talk about pretty much anything. So point one is this, a valley often follows a mountaintop experience. Exodus chapter 32 verse one says, when the people saw that Moses was so long and coming down from the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and said, come make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses who brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. So this incredible moment happens. The Ten Commandments have been given. The blueprint for the tabernacle has been given. God has said, this is how I want you to serve me. You are my people. This is what we're gonna do. This is how we're gonna live together. (laughs) This is how it's all gonna be. And then Moses was hanging out with God on the same mountain where he got given all of this really important information. And the people got really, really bored and went to Aaron and they were like, hey, what's happened to this Moses dude? I want you to make us gods that we can see so that we can be like the other nations. And so this incredible mountaintop experience happens. The Ten Commandments are given. The hand of God comes and writes on stone on the earth. Hey, here are the commandments. Moses is glowing. He's radiant. It's incredible. And straight after that, it's like this crash and burn into a valley. (laughs) And that just shows us that this can happen to anybody, that even having the most intense presence of God moment and experience, it's something we still have to be protective of and we still have to guard our own hearts. Because if it could happen to the nation of Israel, it can happen to us. We have to be We have to be those who are protectors of these sacred moments and not just take them for granted and think, oh, well, it doesn't matter. Point number two, even Elijah, one of the ultimate greats, struggled after Mount Carmel. Elijah is my favorite prophet. He's probably my favorite character in the Bible. I've been obsessed since I was very young. 1 Kings 19, 1 to 4. So 1 Kings 18, just for a little bit of context, Mount Carmel happens. Elijah calls all the people of Israel together. There's 850 prophets of Baal and Asherah that are assembled together. Elijah, whose name Eliyahu means the Lord, he is God. He calls out to all the people of Israel. There's this wicked King Ahab who's in control of the nation. And he says, okay, cool. We're gonna both present sacrifices and the God who answers by fire, that's the one whose God is real. He challenges all these false prophets. It's him versus 850. And then what happens? We know the story. God comes, answers by fire. Elijah kills 850 false prophets by his own hand in the Valley of Kidron, which must have been quite exhausting and very messy. I think about this sometimes. But this incredible experience, the whole nation ends up collapsing on their knees, shouting, God, you know, Yahweh the Lord is God, just like Elijah's name means. So this amazing experience where the nation turns and comes back to God. And then what happens? Now we find ourselves in 1 Kings 19. Verse one to four. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah and said, may the gods deal with me. May it be, may it be ever so severely. If by this time tomorrow, I do not make your life like one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to be a Shiva in Judah, he left his servant there while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom bush, sat down under it and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life, I am no better than my ancestors. The way I relate to this man, he just was feeling, he was ready in his feelings after this incredible mountaintop experience. And then he was terrified because of this crazy woman Jezebel and he decided that it would be better for him to perish than to continue, which is quite dramatic. If you actually just stop Mm -hmm. and think about what he'd 
just accomplished, what God had done through him. Very successful, actually. The whole nation turned. Then a woman says in English 28 words to him, and the Hebrew would have been less because they lack adjectives. That's besides the point. This woman utters a couple of sentences to him, and he goes running away. One of Israel's most successful prophets ever, ever, in the whole of time. And he gets scared and runs away. So the point is, even Elijah, after this incredible mountaintop experience, experienced fear, anxiety, doubt, stress, he was actually suicidal. And if Elijah went through that, if you're struggling, just know you're in good company. God obviously came through for him. The angel said, Elijah, lie down, go to sleep, eat. Yeah, did that a couple of times. And then God started talking to him in an even more intense way. But the point is, if you're struggling, you're not alone. These mountaintop experiences are incredible in life, but they are, we need to be on our guard for what happens afterwards. Because point three, we are vulnerable after a victory. Mm. 1 Corinthians 10, 12. So if you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. That is when we are most vulnerable, is when we are like, Ryan, I've experienced this. Like, ha ha, what a, what a moment. This is incredible. You know, like you just feel like life couldn't get any better. And so often it's in those moments that then temptation comes to us where we have a genuine valley experience. And again, if people like, the nation of Israel, after experiencing God the way they did, if Elijah, if Paul, if all the greats could experience this, there's nothing wrong with you or I if we feel the same way, but it's something for us to be aware of. Um, so that was me just on a little tangent. What do you think, Bree, about all of these things? Wow. I think that I've been there, you yes. know? Um, <clears throat> just in personal experience, especially in understanding the rhythm mm. of mountaintops, just like you said, mm. it comes with a valley. Mm. And <clears throat> after seeing where the highest you can go, speaking of vulner vulnerability, yeah. that that basically puts a target on your back mm. to where the enemy will come and say, oh, you just gave all the honor and all the glory to God. I want to make a mockery of that. Mm -hmm. And so that is a huge moment for the enemy to tempt you, challenge you, and really make you a middleman between yeah. him and the yeah. battle that he has with the Lord anyways. And so I am in full agreement with that, that it does come with the price of you still have to watch your back to not get distracted in your mountaintop. Yeah. And that's what I would, that's, mm, that's great. That's what I would say. Very good. What do you think, Pastor Far? Well, after I made my first billion, I thought, <laughs> I, would, I don't know, I don't really get to the mountaintop that often, actually. Valid, valid, valid. <laughs> I'm a valley guy. Yeah. Valley guy. <laughs> You're a valley guy. True one. Honestly, I feel the same. <laughs> well, I mean, it's been said, and it's true. You have to get your rest. Eat a nice ribeye. I'm a ribeye guy. You are. Where I am right there. <laughs> uh, get your rest because, I mean, a mountaintop experience for Elijah, like you said, he must have been like just absolutely just worn out, you mm -hmm. know? When I'm worn out, I think some pretty bad thoughts or mm -hmm. I'm weak and and so that's that's important. Um, I think of Jesus. Gosh, you know, he gets baptized and the heavens open. What an experience that had to be. Mm. And immediately, he, he, the Spirit leads him in the wilderness where he's tempted of the devil, you know, 40 days and 40 nights. And it's like, it's not cliche. Fortunately, he knew the Word of God. You know, fortunately, he understood how to, you know, yield to the Holy Spirit, especially in that setting. So um, I know it sounds cliche, but the word in prayer um, is powerful. Mm -hmm. And what you don't know will hurt you, you know. And a word about prayer for me recent, late, lately especially, you know, and the word of God too. It do, you don't have to spend the whole day in the Word of God, and you don't have to spend the whole day in prayer. People that say, oh, I prayed eight hours today, it's like, you have to be joking me. I'm <laughs> sorry, I repent, but that's kind of my response. <laughs> and I've heard that before, yeah. but I don't believe them, I'm sorry. But 
You don't have to be on your knees. You don't have to be there for an hour. You can be cooking. You could be in your car. It's a conversation. It's listening all, you know, and it, and it can, and it is all day long. We go in and out, in and out. You know, the scriptures, we just need to uh, give some attention to the word of God. You know, read it, meditate it, but it doesn't have to be eight hours either. Mm. So I think resting and really, you know, having the foundation of God's word and, uh, and prayer is going to help. And knowing, inevitably, when you have a great experience, the temptation and the challenge is right after that. It always is. Mm -hmm. So true. And, you know, this is the thing uh, for all of us. Just to remember, I always wrap it up by kind of going back to the beginning, but a valley often follows a mountaintop experience. Even Elijah struggled after Mount Carmel mm -hmm. and we're vulnerable after a victory. And so it's a, hopefully an encouragement to you, a reminder. I say it probably every single time I'm, I'm hosting Real Life, Real Faith is, I hope you know you're not alone. Yeah. Because I know what it is to feel alone and struggle, to feel alone and, and isolated, even in the midst of an army of believers. I know what it is to have that sense of just nobody else is dealing with this. And that's not true. We're all dealing with things that are very similar. Even if they look a little different, the core of a lot of these issues are the same. And so we're about to go into a time of worship. It's a worship moment really. But um, as we go into that, I'm encouraging you to give, to sow, to bring to God what it is that he deserves. Psalm 116 verse 12 to 14 says, what shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. And so my encouragement to you now, there's a red link below the player. As you click on that and give, just let the question be, what shall I render to the Lord? What shall I give to him for all of his benefits to me? I pray that you would be blessed this week as you carry on going about your day, your real life. I pray that faith would be stirred in you. And I pray that you would feel the presence of the Holy Spirit in a tangible way. God bless you guys. When all I see is the battle, you see my victory. Mm -hmm. When all I see is a mountain, you see a mountain move. And as I walk through the shadow, your love surrounds me. There's nothing to fear now, for I am safe with you. So when I fight, I fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And every fear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. There's nothing impossible for you When all I see are the ashes You see the beauty Yeah When all I see is a cross You see the empty tomb So when I fight, I fight on my knees With my hands lifted high Oh God, the battle belongs to you And every fear I lay at your feet 
I'll sing through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. Oh, oh God, the battle belongs to you. Unknown mighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. An almighty fortress. You go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. So when I fight, I fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you And every fear I lay at your feet I'll sing through the night Oh God, the battle belongs to you Oh God, the battle belongs to you You asked and we listened. We've taken your suggestions and we've made our already amazing Percale bed sheets even better. As a thank you, we're bringing these to you for as low as $24.98 with your promo code. And our new line of Percale bed sheets include everything you loved about our original sheets. Lightweight, durable, breathable, and they sleep cool and crisp. But now, because of you, they're made with 100% long staple cotton and the highest thread count to date. These sheets are softer and more durable than ever before. Plus, they come in all these new colors and styles. And you'll be getting five-star luxury sheets delivered directly to your front door for as low as $24.98. Not only that, they come with our 10-year warranty and the 60-day money-back guarantee. So go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen now. Use your promo code to save 50% percent or more that's as low as $24.98 this introductory offer won't last long so please order now we here at the house of destiny are partnering with you to let our, our viewers of course know about your company it's beverly hills precious metal andrew explain how that works so i'll walk you through it right now so if you go to bh-pm.com right there on the home page you'll see a form that you could fill out and that form is very important in letting us know how we can help you. So you just put in your first name, last name, email address, phone number. There's a section that says, how did you hear about us? And in there, put Kim Clement. And then there's a portion where you could write a couple of notes down on the bottom. Usually within about 24 to 48, 48 hours, we'll contact you by phone call. And then we'll go over everything with you. This isn't a high pressure deal. We always recommend that uh, if you feel uncomfortable, take a step back, pray about it. You will gain the answers that you need by doing that and come back to us when you're comfortable. 